here i am live again and uh hope you're doing well on this wednesday evening uh 7 p.m eastern time and i hope you had a good week uh, i had a fantastic week as usual and uh it's been good um you know, updates on my uh one of my students family congratulations you've uh you secured a house and the contract and uh, hopefully it'll get a settlement very very shortly we did a walk through the property and uh this is a four bedroom uh, I think it's three and a half bath. We're going to turn it into a six, four and a half. And uh, it's going to be an interesting project. And if all goes well, he'll be settling very, very shortly. And I'll be helping him uh, navigate the whole process through the end. If uh, if you feel I can help you on your journey, real estate investment journey, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out if I can, uh, especially if you're in the local D.C. area. But if you're not, that's OK. Just let me know. But kudos to uh, Femi. Uh, on his first investment property. We're going to do a burr and uh, we're also going to rent it to a Section 8 uh, you know, family once everything is all said and done. So uh, kudos to him. Uh, what else has been going on in my world? Um, you know, tenants are going well. They're paying the rent. No problems. Uh, well, next week is going to be another month. And so hopefully if all goes well, a new bout of checks will hit my account very shortly. Anyway, so enough of that. Uh, just let you know, uh, as you can see on this ticker, uh screen down here we're gonna have an event on uh next saturday um on landlording one of my properties similar to one of my uh what i did a few weeks ago education and networking so this one's gonna be focused primarily on landlording and uh really address some of the lessons learned some of the secrets some of the trials and tribulations i've been through uh over the last 30 years or so and so hopefully you can avoid making unnecessary mistakes. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to talk about uh, how to maximize your rent. We're going to talk about how to screen your properties properly, well, screen properly, screen your tenants properly. We're going to talk about, um, you know, how to manage the tenants in such a way that you get tenants that stay a long time, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Um, you know, I'll talk about that. And uh, I'll talk about, uh, you know, really... Um, yeah, it's it's a tough business being a landlord, but you, you can do it. It's doable. Uh, but it's the key. Uh, you know, I'm a proponent of holding on to real estate. And therefore, if you're going to hold on to the property, at some point, you're going to have to figure out how to, um, you know, deal with tenants, how to manage tenants and uh, and so on. So that's what the, the focus of uh, the October the 7th event is going to be. Uh, I highly recommend that you attend. And so it's going to be a hybrid of education. So we're going to focus on landlording and also networking. So you'll be able to meet with like-minded people uh, like yourself who are striving to reach their goals and also reach financial independence. It'll be one of my properties in Washington, D.C. And this one is going to be catered. Uh, so we do have a sponsor. So we've got some really nice food. And so if you're hungry, uh, you know, this is the place to be. We've got some nice food, nice drinks. And it's going to be a catered event. So, um, you know, so that's that, that enough is uh, should bring you out. So, uh, again, so it's going to be education, networking and food uh, for those hungry hearts. But I'll talk more about the events a bit later on. But again, October the 7th, please uh, join me. You can register on Facebook or on Instagram uh, at the handle uh, at DR Joe uh, It's on your screen right now. So uh, sign up there. It is a paid event. Uh, it's forty nine dollars. It's very reasonable. I'm not trying to gouge anybody, uh, but I do. Last time we had a full house, so uh, if you are interested, please register early, uh, so that way you can make sure that you get a, a seat at the event. Uh, today we're going to focus on um, invest like a millionaire, real estate uh, strategies for success, and uh, I thought I'll try and do something a little different uh, this week, and, and that is to do a deep dive into a book. Um, you know, uh, I chose The Millionaire Real Estate Investor by Gary Keller. Uh, it's been around for a while and it's a really good book. And uh, it's probably one of my favorite uh, real estate uh, investment books. And so I thought I'll do something different and just kind of go a little deeper into some of the, um, you know, some of the nuggets, some of the strategies and so on. I'm going to call it takeaways. What I call the key takeaways that I got through the book. Uh, I'm not peddling this book. I have no commissions uh, on it. Uh, I have the book, the physical book. I also have the audio version as well. Um, but uh, so, I, you know, there's no commission here. So there's no hidden agenda. Uh, I just wanted to share what my take key takeaways, uh, having read that book 
several times and listen to it several times also in audiobook as well. So that's what the focus is going to be today. Um, you know, the key tips, key takeaways from the real estate in real estate investor, millionaire real estate investor from Gary Keller. And uh, so the title today is going to be Invest Like a Millionaire, Real Estate uh, Strategies for Success. Okay, let's get going. So, um, you know, let's get going. Anyway, if you've got some questions, as usual, uh, put your questions in the chat box. We're going to have the Q&A session very shortly, well, uh, after this. Anything to do with the real estate investing, put it in there and I'll try and get to it. And uh, you can pick my brains. And uh, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, you know, to talk about it. So again, event October the 7th, and you want to come out. So invest like a millionaire, real estate investment strategies. What are some of the key takeaways uh, that I got by reading the book? So the first one is, um, is mindset. Um, mindset, you know, it's a buzzword that uh, is kind of banded around quite a bit. And, uh, but it's really... Yeah, the way I, I describe it is your thinking. And, uh, you know, before, in my opinion, before you can, before you uh, uh, invest in real estate, you've got to believe that you can do it. Uh, you've got to believe that, you know, you're going to go through trials and tribulations, ups and downs, not going to be an easy journey, but you've got to have faith that you can do this. It's not just for other people. Uh, it's for you. And uh, so that's there's a mindset shift. And I've talked about that several weeks before. Um, you know, that's required from you uh, in order if you want to pursue this journey uh, through the end, because it is not easy. I mean, there are many a times I remember the first house that I bought. I mean, everything was going wrong. And I was just questioning, why am I doing this? You know, this doesn't make sense. You know, why me? What did I do to deserve this? You know, my tenants weren't paying me. They were giving me hell. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a coach. I was just, you know, sailing in this ocean, uh, you know, paddling frantically, just trying to survive. And it's a lonely journey. And so to a certain extent, you've got to believe that, you know, it's worth it. Uh, you got to believe that, uh, you know, it's going to be okay. You got to believe that you have the the you know the ability and the uh, you know and the and, and the skill uh, and the knowledge to get to the other side, whatever that side is. So mindset is really really important, and that's something that uh, in the book he talks about. Uh, it's not you know at first I thought it's ah you know hairy fairy stuff, but you know it's true. Um, you know how you perceive things is really really important. Uh, you and I can have the same, um, you know, something can happen to us and uh, we can have completely different reactions and how we respond to that. Uh, it may, to one person, knock them out and say, I'm not doing this anymore. To another person, they can see this as well. It's an obstacle. OK, how do I figure this thing out? How do I get through this thing and keep moving? So in uh, as you know, the, so let's talk about some of the summaries here, the key takeaways. Um, you know, as I said before, it's really important. The other thing is that uh, he talks about is goals. And uh, we all talk about goals. You know, where are you uh, on this journey? Where do you want to be uh, a month from now, six months from now, a year from now, five, three years from now, five years? You know, where are you? Where do you want to be? And uh, he talks about, uh, you know, the growth mindset uh, you know, to believe that, you know, you can do this to believe that just because, um, somebody else gets a, a deal, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's one less deal for you. There's enough for everybody to go around, even in today's environment where it's real, real tough, there's enough to go around. And, uh, so you kind of have to have a, a growth mindset and he talks about the goals in five different areas. I think you've heard this specific, measurable, achievable, uh relevant and time bound so it's, you know think the smart goal s m a r t so the goals that you have have to be specific it can't be generic it's got to be measurable you got to be able to know how you're doing uh you got to be achievable you can actually do it it's got to be relevant is you know it's got to be something that's uh, meaningful for you and also it's got to be time you got to have some kind of time uh, constraint on it this time next year, this time next week, this time next year, uh, you know, five years from now, whatever it is. And uh, and then visualize. 
that uh, you know you can do this and believe that you can do this. So whether you're a new investor, you know I think it's you got to start with a, a growth mindset. Uh, you got to be able to define your goals. Um, you know, your, especially your financial goals, and uh, and then you have to break them down into smaller components. As I say, you know, how, what's the best way to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. What's the best way to achieve your goals? It's one step at a time. So break it down and visualize your path to success. It goes from A to B to C to D and so forth. And then the other thing is to surround yourself with um, supportive networks, uh, mentors, coach, make sure that, uh, you know, you want to be around positive people who are going to encourage you as opposed to people who are just going to, you know, I don't know, bring you down, doubt you, why are you doing this? You can't do this. And, um, you know, negative thoughts can, or negative people can really uh, bring you down. So that's for a, a key takeaway for a new investor. If you're an intermediate investor, what I got from that is, uh, you know, you got to continuously, uh, you know, believe that you can do it. I mean, there are times there, I have, you know, I recall that there are times where, you know, I, I, I felt I couldn't do this. Uh, there was times where I said, I think, uh, you know, two houses or five houses or 10 houses is enough. You know, there was a time I sort of limited myself and realized that, no, I can do more. And uh, if I stop buying more properties, then uh, there's fewer families who I can help. So I had the opportunity and therefore, you know, I felt that uh, I should purchase more properties, which is what I did. And I've been able to help more families. So, um, you know, belief that I can do it. If you need a coach, if you need a mentor, if you feel that you need to be surrounded by other people who are more seasoned than you, then reach out to them. It doesn't have to be me, but just reach out to more successful people who are doing what it is that you're trying to do. And also they have a proven track record of success. There's a lot of people that talk about this stuff not a whole lot of people who are actually successfully navigating this minefield and doing it. So you want to seek those kind of people, people who have a proven track record of success, who are doing what it is that you are trying to do and, uh, and hopefully incentivizing them so they can help you on your journey. And, uh, and then uh, if you're a seasoned investor, obviously you can share your personal story, uh, your personal journey. Uh, it's very inspirational to some people. Um, to know that, you know, hey, uh, you know, if he can do it or she can do it, then maybe I can do it. Um, you know, these people aren't superhuman. If they can do it, then maybe, you know, I, I can do it as well. And uh, and sometimes just having that, uh, you know, have, hearing that inspirational story, uh, it gives you motivation uh, to want to continue and um you know and so on so if you're a, a more seasoned investor share your story uh with others offer guidance and uh and and hopefully you can help other people overcome mental challenges so that's the key takeaway number one uh from the millionaire real estate investor that i got and uh so the next one i'm going to talk about is a key takeaway two uh which was to do with uh wealth building and myths myths he calls it uh mythologies uh or, or something to that effect and i forgot now and uh so in this part of the do document he kind of takes the time to dispel a lot of the common myths uh you know associated with real estate investing and uh and then he kind of talks a lot about the importance of um to your success of education and networking uh, you can't do this by yourself. You're not the only person who has done this. There are other people who've paved the way. And therefore, you can network. You can be around other people, be around like Ria, go to Ria Estate Investor Meetings, go to workshops, go to uh, join forums. You know, just be around other people and to, 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 to network and to educate yourself. Um, you know, he emphasizes that... Um, you know, it's it's really key uh, to building wealth is uh, is to have that millionaire mindset and being around other people who can help you on your journey. So uh, the other thing he talks about is debunking some of these myths, um, you know, associated with the real estate investing. 
you know, it takes a lot of money, uh, you know, to start. Uh, I don't have any money, therefore I can't do anything. Uh, well, you know, just because, you know, so-and-so can do it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can do it. Well, Dr. Joe, you've been doing this for 30 years, and therefore, you know, that's the reason why it's easy for you. But look at me. I don't have much money. I've got all these responsibilities. You know, I can't do it. Uh, you know, it, it, these are some of the, the myths associated with real estate investing. You know, uh, real estate is too, is too risky. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I can't, I'm scared, you know, uh, and there's nothing wrong with those things. It's just that, uh, you know, if you're not careful, it'll cause you to what I call take inaction, really. Uh, you know, fear of a fear of the unknown will paralyze you into inaction. So he kind of goes through a whole list of myths associated to real estate investing, kind of goes through each one and debunks them all. Uh, so what did I get? Some of the key takeaways from, uh, you know, when he talks about wealth building and myths is that the importance of setting clear goals. Uh, that's the thing, leveraging financial strategies, um, you know, leveraging the fact that, you know, in real estate, you don't need 100% of the money. You can, um, you know, depending on the lender you go to, you may be able to go start with 3%. 5%, 10%, 15%, 25%, down, uh, and therefore leverage, uh, you know, take advantage of leverage, the ability to purchase a, a home for less money than, you know, what you have for the home. Uh, understanding that real estate is dynamic and uh, it's the key to, uh, it's the key, it's the absolute key to wealth building. And uh, if you don't believe me, uh, let me just, tell you a story of that's happened to me. And, and that was when I first started, I was working my regular job and I didn't tell anybody. I kind of kept it a low profile. I was buying real estate. Um, I, I didn't advertise. I was just doing my job, uh, working hard. I, you know, I, I knew the importance of having a job because obviously with it, without the job, it's harder to get the mortgage. And therefore, uh, I needed a job as a means to get a, a mortgage. So the job was a means to an end. It wasn't an end in itself. I worked very, very hard at my job uh, because I wanted to keep it. And I enjoyed it really. But, you know, part time I was doing some real estate. Uh, I didn't have a lot of the systems that I'm sharing with you in place. Uh, but, you know, I did what I had to do. And a lot of my work colleagues, uh, you know, they did the regular stuff, which was just a you know, go to work, work hard and come home. None of them, as far as I recall, were investing in real estate. Uh, none of them, as far as I recall, were trying to, um, you know, create a, a plan B just in case the job uh, went down. And so when I was able to, you know, to leave my job uh, because my rental income uh, equaled what I was making, a lot of people were shocked. Uh, they didn't know that I was doing this. And, uh, you know, I mean, um, yeah, it's it, it it was it was a shock to a lot of people that you know here's little Joe you know doctor well it was doctor Joe I was Joe doing his thing and he was able to uh, amass this uh, you know this real estate portfolio anyway so uh, you know real estate is the key to wealth building uh, I think uh, in this country anyway uh, people who don't own real estate assets um, you know they have a hard time especially if they break down their um uh their financial uh financial uh what do you call it uh, you know the, 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 you have net worth you know the assets my uh, liabilities okay so if you're a new investor what does this mean for you it means that don't let myths uh, deter you don't let myths uh you know stop you from starting uh, allocate time for education, um, you know, what it tells me, because through education, through meeting other people, uh, you can debunk some of these myths. Uh, you'll hear stories from people who made it, and it can be very encouraging. It can be very motivating. Attend seminars, read books, listen to podcasts, networking with other experienced investors, because they'll help you debunk some of these things. And, uh, and really establish a solid foundation for your real estate journey. It's got to be based on something. You've got to have some knowledge, take the time to learn, uh, but try to avoid paralysis analysis. Uh, you learn so much, but yet you don't actually do anything. If you're an intermediate investor, what did I get from that? 
uh, you know, help other uh, new investors on this journey, uh, tell them that some of these myths are, in fact, true, uh, untrue, and uh, attend workshops as well to, uh, you know, again, to network with like-minded people. And for more event or more advanced people, uh, if you're more of a seasoned investor, what does this mean to you? It means that maybe you can share some of these myths busting. Um, you can maybe host a myth busting session or a workshop to address some of the common uh, misconceptions associated with uh, real estate investing. Uh, I share some of the myths. Uh, I've shared some with you now, and I'm always trying to do that. Yes, you can do this. It's not easy, but it's doable. I'm not just going to say, well, if I can do it, you can do it. No, I'm just saying that it's not insurmountable. Uh, it's definitely possible. Okay, so this next uh, takeaway was number three. And uh, it talks about some of the wealth, what he calls wealth building principles. Uh, these are fundamental principles uh, that guide successful real estate investors. And he talks about that in the book. And uh, he identifies three key uh, principles. Um, one is to buy right. Uh, obviously, you got to buy the right property, and you got you know the right price, the right terms, and the uh, right locations, and things like that. And he also recommends that you own your primary residence first, and uh, and start you know because uh, one of the benefits of uh, owning your primary residence. Or, you know, is that you can get better financing and you can get better terms. There's less money that's required. And it's just easier uh, to own your first property as opposed to just going gung-ho all out on buying investment property. Uh, he's a proponent of the first house should be the house that you live in. Therefore, the rent that you ordinarily would pay, uh, you know, it goes towards paying down your mortgage. Now, that's a little bit, uh, I know it's controversial. Uh, some investors out here don't believe that. They believe that uh, you don't, you shouldn't even own your primary residence. You should rent that. Uh, you know, that, anyway, he doesn't believe that. And uh, so he kind of stresses the importance of home ownership and uh, as a foundational principles for, um, you know, building financial security. And uh, he also talks about the importance of leverage and how to manage leverage and uh, how mortgages can help you uh, start that journey. Uh, it can help you maximize returns and also it can expand, it can help you expand your real estate portfolio. Uh, so, uh, in the book, he, he talks about five main principles associated with that. He, he breaks it down as follows. Think a million, buy a million, own a million, receive a million and give a million. Uh, that's what, uh, he kind of breaks it down to that, uh, those five, uh, and what I'll do, I'll just talk about each briefly. What does he, what does he mean when he says think a million? Uh, yeah, he talks about the importance of cult cultivating a, a millionaire mi mindset as we talked about before and believing that you can do this. Uh, so again, it's mindset. Think you can do this. Um, you know, think big, uh, don't limit yourself. And, uh, you know, adopt a mindset of growth, um, adopt a mindset of wealth building and uh, having confidence, uh, you know, in your abilities to build wealth and to acquire real estate over the time and, uh, and so on. So for intermediate, you know, again, it's all about mindset continually reinforce that you can do this as possible and sharing your experiences. That's what he talks about when he says think a million. So think that you can believe that you can do this. In the next part, which is buy a million, uh, it talks about uh, this is the significance of actually pulling the trigger and making it happen. Thinking is all is all well and good, but at some point you gotta have to you've you've actually got to start doing, and you've actually start you got to start pulling the trigger and start acquiring properties. And uh, he talks about purchasing at the right price and also at the right terms. Um, you know, he says that. You know, successful real estate investors consistently acquire properties that align with their wealth building goals. Once I knew that I wanted to buy and hold, once I knew that uh, I wanted to buy certain types of houses, certain locations, certain price points, uh, I developed criteria, and uh, I, you know, you know, informed 
the deal finders, whether it be real estate agents, wholesalers, bird dogs, whatever, what I was looking for. And uh, they started feeding me with leads and uh, I negotiated. And then if it met, if it made sense, then I would then purchase and, uh, and take it happen. You know, you start small. Uh, I'm not like a Grant Cardone. He thinks that, you know, you either stop, go big or go home. Um, you know, I think that for most people, that's not realistic. You have to start small, uh, get your training wheels on and uh, learn from any mistakes that you're going to make. And then that will give you the confidence to go to the next step and next step and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, start small, uh, learn, evaluate your deals and then move forward. If you're an intermediate investor, focus on expanding your portfolio. Uh, you know, with your properties. And if you're a seasoned investor, you know, maybe you can mentor and coach other people. So regardless of your experience level, uh, the core principle remains the same, which is to buy right is buying right is the foundation for real estate wealth. Uh, he kind of talks about that in a lot of detail. And then in own a million, this is where you actually, uh, you know, the importance of actually, you know, I said before, taking action and, uh, and start amassing uh, this portfolio that, uh, you know, that you're trying to, uh, you know, establish, um, you know, uh, so for new investors, that means, uh, you know, uh, at some point, uh, learning, establishing the team, uh, the right people around you, uh, whether it be, uh, carpenters, whether it be real estate agents, whether it be appraisers, whether it be plumbers, whether it be, you know, financial uh, partners, whatever it is, you, you know, in order to own a million, i.e. to uh, to amass a fortune, you're going to have to have the right team in place. And he talks quite a bit about that. OK, and then receive a million. This is kind of interesting when he talks about that. Anyway, so if you've got some questions, put in the chat box. I'll be going to um, Q&A very, very shortly. Hopefully this is good. Uh, let me know if, this, if you're enjoying this uh, deep dive into a particular book. And if you have a book, that you think I should uh, review uh, in a future session, uh, please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to uh, you know to go buy it and read it, and hopefully share some of those principles with you. So if you got if if you got a book that you'd recommend, uh, please let me know. I'll put it in the comments, and uh, maybe we'll try to uh, do a session on that alone. I like to do a, a, a book, make it more regular thing where I, I deep dive into a book. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm doing a lot more reading. I listen to a lot more podcasts and just trying to grow my mind. And uh, as opposed to, you know, wasting time on meaningless stuff, uh, watching TV and, uh, you know, and, and so on. So uh, receive a million, what's he talking about here? This is the, the whole concept of passive income. Um, you know, he talks about that in quite some detail. Uh, I realized I was informed the, the importance of passive income, the ability to acquire assets, enough assets, so those assets start uh, you know, generating passive income. So it doesn't have to, um, it's not like a job where you, you, you're trading your time for money. Passive income means that you acquire assets that generate income, uh, whether it be rental income, like in my case, or other, you maybe own some securities, and you generate dividends from that as well. But uh, in real estate terms, it's sort of usually um, having enough assets and those assets generate income usually through rents, uh, whether it be single family, multifamily or, or, or whatever. Um, so it's the importance of building that uh, income producing pro uh, portfolio. Uh, it's the importance of learning how to do that, uh, how to acquire cash flow and assets, uh, the importance to be able to scale um, you know, if you just got one house, you're making a few hundred dollars in, in cash flow. That's not enough. So you need to scale in order to, um, uh, you know, expand that and, uh, you know, and so on. So he talks quite a bit about that, the whole idea of receiving a million, uh, especially income from passive sources. And then finally give a million. This is, uh, the whole notion of, uh, you know, making the contribution, uh, to others. Uh, whether it be to, um, you know, um, other, you know, supporting other causes, uh, whether it be, you know, helping other people, uh, being a positive influence to others. Uh, like what I do, I try to make a difference, in, especially my tenants, because uh, I do a lot of uh, Section 8 low-income families, making a difference in their lives. 
by the ability or the opportunity for them to live in a, a, a nice house in a nice area and so on. So the whole notion of giving a million and having the mindset whereby it's not just about you, it's what difference you can make to other people uh, on this journey that you're trying to do. Okay, so that's uh, key takeaway number three. And the key takeaway number four I got was, uh, you know, the starting point. The, he talks about different investor models. I said, what's time? 7.30. There's so much I can talk about. I don't think I'm going to have enough time uh, to go through this. Uh, so I'll just quickly talk about some of the, this stuff. So he talks about the investor models, the different types of models that's possible for real estate investors uh, like you and I. He talks about the model where some people do is one property at a time. They start small, slowly. They buy one property at a time and pay it off and continue. Uh, you can do what we call a fast track model where you aggressively uh, purchase a number of property over a short period of time. Um, you know, you want to accelerate uh, your wealth building. And uh, obviously, if you accelerate that, then there's a bit more risk involved, but that's okay. Uh, but the idea is to fast track your, um, you know, so that your journey. Um, then he talks about the buy and hold model. We all know about that one, buying properties, acquiring them and holding them for the long term and to build wealth, uh, uh, you know, through appreciation, cash flow, and paying down the mortgage. Uh, it talks about the fixer upper model, uh, which is uh, a lot of you know, flippers do. They buy usually a distressed property or a house that needs a lot of work. They renovate it and add force improvements or force um, equity uh, appreciation and then sell them as a profit. Uh, you know, again, flipping. Uh, I've done a couple of those. I'm not a great fan of flipping strategy. Uh, you know, it's great, but. Uh, you know, uh, I just believe in just hold on to this stuff. Uh, multi-family model. Uh, this time you're buying multi-family uh, as opposed to a single family buying apartment buildings. And uh, the good thing about uh, apartment buildings and uh, multi-family is that, you know, you have the potential for greater cash flow and you can have economies of scale. Uh, Commercial is a model. Uh, this time you're dealing with more sort of uh, you know, office buildings, retail centers, industrial, uh, things like that. He talks about that. Uh, there's another one which uh, is recent is the sort of short-term rental, um, you know, the Airbnb, VRBO uh, model. I know that's been cracked down by a lot of jurisdictions. And then there's also the lease option model, uh, which is uh, whereby you, you, know, you, you, you lease a property from somebody and uh, you, or you take uh, control of a property and then at some point in the future, you exercise that uh, option to purchase and uh, and so on. So there are lots of different models and he goes through uh, different them that talks about the pros and cons, how to do it and uh, and so on. Uh, key takeaway number five uh, is uh, action. He develops, a, he, he su suggests a, an action plan and uh, to start and wherever you are on your journey. And he goes in quite some detail about that, the importance of taking action, the importance of being consistent, the importance of being pur purposeful. And he talks about, uh, you know, the importance of leverage and how you can fast track your journey uh, through leverage, uh, importance of being action oriented, uh, disciplined in um, you know, implementing your strategy, prior to prioritize taking action. Uh, you know, don't just wish take action you gotta pull the trigger and the importance of knowledge on that journey as well and then the five uh key takeaway number five is did I do um is gonna be or key key takeaway number six i'm sorry is the um stay on top uh eventually you know you gotta stay on top you gotta stay on top of things you got to put all of this stuff together you gotta to learn and as you learn you adjust uh you modify and uh, and keep going it's not easy. It's a tough journey. Um, you know, it could be done. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it. If they can do it, you can do it. Uh, you have the abilities, you have the information, you have the resources to take action and, uh, and so on. So that way you stay on top of this, you adopt the right mindset and you create a solid strategy and you're persistent and, um, you know, towards your financial independence goals. So that my friends, is the key are the key takeaways from that I got anyway through the millionaire real estate investor. Uh, it's a great book by Cal uh, Gary Keller. 
I highly recommend it. Uh, again, I'm not making anything. There's no commissions. There's no, you know, thing for me to gain from this. It's just, I, it's just a good book. It's probably one of my best uh, real estate investing books, and I highly recommend it. Uh, I have both the book and also the audio version as well. So that, my friends, is it for today. Hopefully, it was help, helpful. And if you got some suggestions on future uh, real estate books that you think I should, uh, you know, uh, read, and then you know, do a deep dive then please let me know and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, share at, at a future uh, Wealth Wednesday. Okay, let's have a look. What else do we have? So again, enter your questions in the chat box. We're going to go to the Q&A session now. Anything to do with real estate investing, bring it on and, uh, and so on. And then finally, don't forget, I've got this uh, event uh, October the 7th. Uh, one of my properties here in Washington, D.C. It's going to be a great event. The last one was uh, packed. I had a great turnout. It was really, really good. Really good. And you certainly don't want to miss this one. It's going to be catered. We've got some nice food. Uh, we have a sponsor who's going to be providing, you know, underwriting that part. Uh, so if you bring your hunger, as they say. Uh, but we're going to talk about landlording. We're going to do deep dive into landlording, anything to do with landlording. Uh, how to maximize rents, how to manage tenants, how to screen tenants, how to manage relationships, uh, how to manage properties, what happens if this happens as a potential rental property, what happens if that happens. We're going to go through all of that. I'm going to share my heart out and talk about all my, what, 30 plus years as a landlord, especially Section 8 landlord. If you want to know anything about Section 8, uh, you definitely want to come along. Uh, it's not easy. In fact, I sent an email out to you know, some of the Section 8 folks today uh, about some of the lessons that I'm learning uh, about the process, the importance of relationships with down, people down at the housing authority. It's really all, all important. So I'm going to kind of talk about all of that. Uh, how is it that I'm able to get 5, 10, 15, 20-year tenants when most other people, you know, they have turnovers every one or two years? Why is that? You know, what am I doing that others aren't doing? And why is it that other landlords are all constantly in landlord tenant court where i don't usually go very often why is it that uh you know every time the phone rings it's just problem after problem after problem with these tenants and i don't really get those uh i have the systems in place if something happens to the house uh you know there's something wrong with one of the houses today with the washer dryer it didn't you know um i think the tenant called me and said that uh, it wasn't working okay no problem it's called a home warranty company they went out there and now get a new washer dryer okay uh, it took about 10 minutes of my time and uh, and so on. So you got to have certain things in place such that it doesn't run you ragged because if you don't have those things in place, you know, it's it, it can be very stressful uh, being a landlord, but it doesn't have to be. And that's what we're going to talk about as well. How can you elevate uh, your landlording uh, to the next level? And so, again, elevate your landlording skills. October the 7th, you can uh, register on um, Instagram and also on my uh, Facebook handle. And uh, tomorrow, day after, it should be on my website. There should be a link to the website. So uh, whenever you hear this, whenever you read this, sign up. It's going to be great. And I'm looking forward to it. And it's one of my properties here in Washington, D.C. So please come along. If you've got some emails you want to send me, you can email me at uh, Joe, As Joe at Joe Asimo. I'll try my best to return your calls and uh and so on so let's get down to the chats so again shoot me put your questions in the chat box and uh, i'll do the best that i can to answer them okay good evening from atlanta dr virginia uh lucia johnson hope you're doing well doctor and what are you a doctor of i'm curious to know and uh, I'm, my doctorate is in uh, information systems. I did re-engineering, which is the uh, amalgamation of technology and business. Okay, uh, Dow2. Hey, doctor. Uh, Dow2, hope you're doing well. You're free into Phoenix. And uh, hope you're doing well. And uh, hopefully, uh, you, you know, congratulations, Femi. Yes, Femi, congratulations to you on your, on your deal and, uh, and so on. Uh, okay. Yes. If you want to register, uh, the, uh, the event, you can, uh, go on the, uh, what's it called? Eventbrite. You can just click the button there 
and you can sign up directly. So please uh, press the link in the chat box if you're on Facebook, and uh, you can then uh, you know reserve a spot. And uh, I'll see you uh, October the seventh in uh, you know Washington D.C. Isaiah, hey man, what happened yesterday? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was waiting for you to call me, but uh, I was on the Zoom, but you didn't show up. So hopefully, uh, what's it called? Uh, we'll uh, we'll connect next week. What does being one of your students entail? Are you accepting more, even out of state? Yes, I am accepting more, even out of state. Yes, uh, we have to work through that, but not a problem. We can talk. I mean, I'm just I just trying to help other people, uh, you know, to replicate what I'm trying to do. Uh, I love what I do. I think it's uh, it's 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 a good business. You can make money, but also you can make a difference in other people's lives. And um, you know, I, I enjoy it. So yeah, we can talk about how uh, I can be of assistance to you on, on your journey, Isaiah. No problem. Uh, let's have a look. What traits are you looking for in tenant personalities? Hold on. What traits are you looking for in tenants? personality wise let's pretend you have two applicants that look perfect on paper what are you looking for to narrow it down to your final pick okay um i i so what i do is uh whenever i advertise a property uh obviously people are going to call me uh i explain uh, you know describe the house i also describe the screening process what we're going to do if they're interested and uh, I give them as much information about the house. I give them as much information about who I am as a landlord and what I'm looking for from a tenant. I'm looking for a tenant that's clean, quiet, responsible, excellent rental history, and can pay the rent. And uh, I tell them I'm the world's greatest landlord. I'm looking for the world's greatest tenant. Is that you? Okay, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, so eventually they, they come over to the house. Uh, I do in-person showings i'm not a great fan of uh you know renting to people who haven't seen the house uh i like to uh invite them to come over and they come over uh again they walk through the house i give them an application form and then they fill it out and so your question here is you have two people who look good um in terms of personality wise i try again i try to explain what i'm looking for isaiah uh, in a in a tenant, and uh, I as, you know I I will contact obviously uh, current landlord, previous landlords. Uh, I will do a credit check, uh, eviction check. I will check credit, uh, but I will also go to their home. Um, now I know that's a little controversial, uh, but I I I, I want to go to your home. I want to see how you keep your home and why. It's because uh, how your home is today is uh how my home's going to be in three months it's guaranteed so uh some people may say no which is fine um and then i go to the home and when i go to the home visit i usually like to meet with them the entire family and kind of get the dynamics of the family uh so you know so once i do the home visit speak to them uh speak to the family uh spend some time with them you usually get a good feeling as to if there's, if there's a fit or not a fit. And uh, and then that's, that's uh, to answer your question, Isaiah, that's how I differentiate, uh, you know, between these two applicants that I have. It's, uh, you know, you've only got one house, so at some point you got to make a decision. Um, for Section 8, credit is not that important because most of them have cre bad credit. Uh, it's more of the current landlord, previous landlord references, and uh the home visit is really really important and uh and just uh talking to them uh expectation setting and make sure it's a good fit i mean that's all i mean to a certain extent it does require a little bit of gut uh but i think as you go through the entire process people tend to uh fall by the wayside and uh, ultimately you'll end up with somebody again on october the 7th the whole notion of you know screening and selecting the tenants because if you get it wrong here, you are, it's downhill from there. Uh, most of the problems you're going to have as a landlord, as a buy and hold investor, is because you you, you, you you got the wrong person in your house. I mean, that's all it boils down to. 
and uh, and and that's where screening comes in. So I would say 60, 70 percent of your problems is just that you just got the wrong person in your house. And uh, it can be real tricky, uh, especially if your house is empty and you got nobody is interested. And then on top of that, you got a mortgage due next month. Oh, been there, done that. Uh, it's it's scary. But yeah, you have to have policies. You have guidelines. You got to be able to uh, you know make sure you follow those. Also, it's it prevents you from um, falling foul of um, you know sort of uh, housing. Uh, you know, policies and things like that, fair housing. I hope I answered your question, Isaiah. Thank you, Dr. Joe, for a great book recommendation. Yes, ready. Uh, it's a great book and uh, definitely check it out. Yoli, thank you, Dr. Joe. Uh, should I demo a very, should I demo a very old home on one lot and build new on my double lot with escalated cost to borrow now compared to early 2000 to 2020. Let me see if I understand your question, Yoli. Uh, you got a house and uh, it's on one lot. And uh, you. So your question is, do you demo it and build a new on a double lot? So I don't know if you're going to have two houses uh, on this one lot. I'm sorry, no, you're going to have one house on a double lot as opposed to one house on a single lot. So I suppose you could in theory, have two houses uh, on two lots. I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, it, it's gonna, a lot's going to depend on uh, you know the circumstances. Y'all, this is a deep dive. I don't have all the information to to tell you. Uh, but if you want to make, if you want to maximize your money, uh, you you may be better off having two houses on two lots, and now you've got two properties uh, that can appreciate. Two properties whereby you can get some rental income. Two properties whereby you can build wealth, uh, as opposed to one uh, with a double lot. I would think that two house again. It depends on your lot and you know what's nearby, the neighborhood, and all that kind of different thing. But generally, two houses is I think uh, in, over the long haul is better than one house. Uh, the analogy I would use is: Is it better to if you got a hundred thousand dollars, for example, is it better to pay off a hundred thousand dollar mortgage and that way you got a house free and clear or do you buy two houses uh use 50 percent down 50 down, fifty thousand down and then borrow fifty uh thousand on each okay so you're so you're leveraging some houses as opposed to free and clear or do you buy 10 houses put ten ten thousand dollars down uh, and so on. So it just depends. Uh, if you're, on, it depends what phase you're in. If you're in your growth phase of your journey, uh, I would say it's probably better to have multiple houses than one. Uh, if you're kind of towards the end of your real estate journey and you're kind of uh, almost there, uh, maybe it's not necessary to take on more debt. Maybe it's uh, better just to pay it off. So again, it just depends, Yoli. Um, you know, on your situation. So hopefully. Uh, I provide some additional insight. Continue. Should I try to salvage the existing home? Salvage the existing home. It depends on the condition of the house, I suppose. Uh, how bad it is. Um, you know, uh, sometimes it's if it's the recent point of no return, then you know maybe you have to salvage it. If it can be repaired, then it's going to be how much is it going to cost to repair it? Uh, is the cost worth it? Do you have contractors who can actually do that? And or is it better just to tear it down and start from fresh? I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the situation, but hopefully uh, I provided some uh, additional information for you, uh, Yoli. With interest rates, this is from Animal Life. With interest rates, what's the time? 7.50? Okay, if you got some questions, we've probably got a few more minutes. Put your questions in the uh, chat box and I'll try to get to them uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, anim anime Life, with interest rates at 7%, what strategy are you using to profit off Section 8? Housing, positive cash flow. Housing in DC are quite high, so it seems quite difficult. Yes, house prices are high. Uh, cash flow is, uh, you know, is it's 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 not what it used to be. Uh, when interest rates are three or four percent, I can tell you that. Now it's it's hard to get cash flow. Um, you know, uh, before I could get cash flow, um, you know, on. Uh, 4% interest rates. And uh, then it 
five percent six now it's like seven percent oh my god it, you're almost breaking even uh at the point so it depends i'm a long-term player which means that uh over time in this market in washington dc prices tend to appreciate okay so just history tells me that five ten years from now um i'll be thankful I bought in 2023 when prices were cheap. Okay. Uh, it's always expensive when you start real estate investing and you're thinking how in the world I, prices can't go any higher than this. No way. And then five years from now, you realize it is uh, 10 years from now it is. So, you know, it is what it is. History tells us, uh, don't believe me. You speak to anybody who's been around for a little while. Um, most people will regret two things. One is they wish they started early. Well, three things. They wish they started early. Two, they wish they bought more. And three, they wish they kept more. So, um, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, interest rates are high. Yeah, there's very little cash flow. Um, you know, but I recall the first house I bought when I started, I was making $50 in cash flow, $50. And I had a tenant from hell. Going through all that hell for fifty dollars, you think I was crazy? Why don't you just sell the house? Uh, I kept the house. Uh, I still own the house thirty-five years later, and uh, the house on that block in Aga for seven hundred and fifty thousand. I bought it for 40, 40, 47 thousand, I think. And when I bought it, people were saying I was paying too much. So the cash flow is fifty dollars. Now the rent is four thousand seven hundred, and the house is free and clear. So I'm now making 4,000 something cash flow. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, you know, if I didn't buy that house, then uh, I'll be kicking myself. So, you know, you may have to uh, temper your cash flow requirements. And especially if you're in an appreciating market and, uh, and hopefully you can get a tenant in there who will stay for many, many years, like a lot of section eight families do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, three, four, five, six thousand dollars is some of the rents around here. And uh, but the tenants are still staying because their portion of the rent is so low relative to the rest of the mortgage. Yoli, yes. OK, Yoli, thumbs up. OK, I'm not too sure. OK, good. Hopefully I answered your question well. Thank you, Dr. Joe. I'm still mind blown. You do all this for free. This information is worth so much. Yeah, it is, but you know, it's okay. Uh, if you want to pay me, that's okay. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I'll give you my credit card. I'll give you my Zelle account if you want. You can, uh, you know, show your love. But no, it, it's okay. Uh, you know, uh, I enjoy this. I want people to grow. I want people to uh, to replicate what I'm doing. And if I do good, good is always going to come back to me anyway so let's go and wrap it up in a second uh so well, thank you so much dr joe i appreciate it, anime and uh yesterday i was on a podcast i was a guest on the podcast uh affordable housing podcast it was a great time with uh, kent and hopefully that's going to be broadcast very shortly and uh, anybody who's uh who's interested in helping me edit and put uh, my wealth wednesdays to a podcast form uh, please let me know if you have the skill sets to do that. And I definitely would uh, do some bartering. Maybe I can help you on your real estate journey in exchange for your expertise. I want to, I want to put all the uh, uh, Wealth Wednesdays uh, onto a podcast platform, uh, whether it be iTunes, um, you know, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and all these other platforms. Uh, so that way for people who can't watch but want to listen, uh, it's available for them as well. So if you have those skill sets, please let me know and uh, we can see what we can do uh, and so on. So that's it, my friends. Again, all I want to do is to mention that uh, we do have an event October the 7th uh, in Washington, D.C. And so please, if you're in the area, please come along. It's going to be a great event and uh, it's going to be education and networking. We're going to focus a lot on landlording. And uh, it's going to be good. We're going to do some deep diving. Also, you can network with like-minded people. You can meet with me. Also, the event is catered, so we're going to have some nice food. Uh, so bring your empty stomach with you. And we're going to have some nice drinks as well. So uh, October the 7th here in Washington, D.C., one of my properties. You can register uh, you know, at uh, Facebook or Instagram at uh, my handle, 
at dr joe asimo uh so at dr joe asimo dr joe asimo and uh you can uh you know sign up for the event there and also it's also i think it's on the link here um uh it's the event uh it's on here as well so uh yeah so sign up it's gonna be great i'm looking forward to it and uh while there are seats otherwise once it's all the seats are taken it is done my friends i will see you next wednesday at 7 p.m eastern time on another wealth wednesday take care guys bye for now <laughs>